Hello web developers, uh, welcome to another project walkthrough for a practice project around refactoring. So uh, what we are working with today is this uh, refactoring repository here. And uh, the walkthrough that we're going to do today is actually detailed as part of the Practical JavaScript 2 Building Applications book, so you can follow along here and see all the details of how we're going to work this project. Uh, but the, um, the project itself requires us to go into a existing, an existing Vue.js application, which is a, a weather application, and to make improvements to the way that this application has been put together. So we're going to be breaking out uh, child components based on existing code. Um, we're going to be consolidating uh, an API configuration. And there will be a couple of other miscellaneous cleanup things that we'll be able to do uh, as we're working through all of this uh, refactoring work. So um, let's go ahead and jump into actually uh, working the project. So what we're going to do is fork this from the initial uh, repository into our personal space. Now we will clone it to our local workspace, wherever that happens to be. I'm working on my MacBook Pro. And we w should open up our files in our chosen text editor. Um, I like Sublime, so I'll be using Sublime for this project. And finally, we can go ahead and run uh, the development server and see what comes up. And what we can see here is that uh, we have not actually installed the dependency. So this is a good mistake to make. Um, <laughs> before we can run the, the de development server, we need to actually run npm install to install the package dependencies for this project. All right, so 13 seconds later, we have the packages installed, and now we can run the dev site and see what it looks like. And what we see here is uh, the application. If I open up our developer tools, uh, we can see that a promise was rejected with an error um, not sure if that is a spurious error or not, uh, but we can definitely see that we, we do have things, uh, that are being populated here from the city search, including, uh, this data values results is where the results will go if we search. But when we do that search, uh, our results will say no. And, um, we can see that there was an error fetching the weather data. So we uh and then we have that error just output um in here so we're actually uh clearly it should be outputting error dot message instead of the error itself nonetheless um that definitely lets people know that something has gone wrong so uh remember that refactoring is not about improving performance so we're actually not going to address that in this work um but we are going to uh, restructure the way that errors are made. So it wouldn't be totally out of line to slip in a little fix there. Uh, but um, nonetheless, uh, in order to actually make this uh, work, because if we look in here at what the uh, actual error message is, we can see that it is an invalid API key. And in fact, if we look in Sublime here and we look at the components uh, the city search component, which is the one that we were just using in the home view. Uh, if you want to verify that, you can look in the um, router file here. Oh, look, there's a 
to do in the router file that I will remove because I'm refactoring, and that means removing spurious to dos. Um, but we can see here that uh, City Search uses this component, City Search. That component is in the components directory and in the City Search file. So it all makes good sense. And now when we look at City Search here, if we scroll down, we can see that there is a spot where we have to put in our API, our app ID, which is our API key. Um, we, we'll actually be able to see that that exists everywhere. And so um, it exists there. Might also notice that we have a test search component. Um, we should verify whether or not that component is actually used. Uh, it appears to not be a complete component. So, um, and it's not referenced in the index for the router. It is not referenced in our main.js or our app.view. Um, so I think we should make this a candidate for deletion. We won't deal with it right now. We'll clean up uh, extra files in a little bit. Let's not get too distracted. Um, so what we're trying to do is put our app ID in there. Um, to do that, we actually need to go to uh, Open Weather Map um, and generate an API key. And you see that's the first of these basic requirements here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start doing that. Um, we will, uh, I've got an API key generated. I blurred it uh, for us here, but I can copy it. And, uh, oh, wait a minute, cancel that, sorry. Um, I can copy it out still, and then I will be able to paste that in here. Um, I don't really care that much about you all seeing it, but uh, I will certainly um, minimize that. Uh, this is not a key that is used anywhere, so. Um, so now that we have this all completed, um, we should have a working functional uh, website here. So if we search for Seattle again, you can now see that we have actually received all of these uh, received these results. So with Seattle, there's only one result. If I search for something like Paris, I would get multiple results. It's Paris, France, Paris, US, Paris, US. So um, search for something like Chicago, Chicago, and Chicago BZ, is that, it's not Brazil, that, that would be BR. There you go, there's another Chicago out there. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so, we have results coming in and uh, they appear to be um, real. Uh, I am located in Seattle and rain and mist is, is what's happening today. So um, this all appears to be legitimate data that is coming through. Of course, I could be checking um, in, my, uh, in my queries here and I can see that um, we, we have a fully formed query with an app ID properly um, appended to it there. So all of that appears to be solid and um, I think we're ready to move on to the actual work so uh, that is is what it takes to just get things sort of up and running let's let's take a moment now to go through the requirements and actually figure out what we're going to do so um, we need to get our API key in so we've done that properly um, we need to verify the site works with our key so it appears appears to work I should say we can view the current weather um, and we can view a five-day forecast that gives us like an hourly forecast sort of thing. It's every few hours, I guess. And, um, and we can see that all of this works properly. Uh, we can go back to the current weather for Seattle or we can go back to home and do another search. So um, we've, we've successfully completed those first three basic requirements. So then the, other, the next thing is to abstract the base configuration for API requests to a common file. Uh, then we're going to create child components that can display weather information in a well-formatted way. Then we're going to use the child components in each of the views to eliminate redundant HTML and CSS. 
Then we're going to create a child component called error list to handle the display of error messages. Then we're going to clean up extraneous code comments and files and add comments where they would be helpful. Um, so that is, uh, that's solid. Um, then we've got some additional stretch goals that we can achieve. Um, you know, there's multiple ways to achieve these basic requirements as well. So I'm gonna show one way to sort of get at this stuff. Um, but I encourage you to look at the code yourself and come up with ideas on your own of how you can reorganize things. Um, if, you, uh, if you let yourself make more changes to the code, even more things become possible. And uh, sometimes when you're doing a really heavy revision, that's, that's okay. But for this project, we wanna focus on refactoring that doesn't alter the actual functionality of the project. We just wanna rearrange things so that it's a little bit easier to maintain it. And if we look here at the code, um, you notice that we, we can definitely see areas, you know, we have these to-dos, so weather summary could be a child component. If we look at this, this weather summary is duplicated here, um, it's duplicated here, and it's duplicated here. Uh, we also have, um, we have weather data that is duplicated in all these places, and that weather data um, is basically the same across each of these things, right? Um, and then we have, uh, we then have um, our actual API call, which you notice we have the full URL each time, we have the app ID and units being included each time, um, if we look in here, we see the same thing. We see the app ID and the units and the full URL and same thing over here in the forecast page. So we're basically, we're dealing with three main pages in this application. And those three pages uh, are each basically just sort of uh, independent right now. They're not reusing any elements or anything, but they each have really similar stuff in them, um, including like all of this output here. So I think we really need to um, make sure that we can, uh, that we can get this, um, you know, to, to work properly. So uh, that is, um, that's what we're going to do. We're not gonna really mess with the router. I took out that one spurious comment. There are a couple of other things going on in here. If we look at some of the basic requirements, you know, clean up any extraneous code comments or files. And so we already sort of started seeing that. Um, I noticed there's a sample data.json file here. This appears to be um, some data from the weather service possible. It says sample JSON response. If that's not referenced anywhere, we should probably get rid of that. This test search appears to be extra. We should get rid of that. Oh, look, it even says delete this file. It was experimental. So let's just delete that file. Um, we can, uh, let's go ahead and just delete sample data.json. We're just gonna assume that sample data is extraneous. And then we can um, uh, work on breaking out these individual uh, portions. So let's, let's start out by uh, figuring out um, how to get our base API configuration abstracted. So let's, let's switch this from Axios to a custom component or custom code that we that we make. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do is under the source directory, I'm going to make a new folder, and I'm going to call this folder common. And then under that folder, I'm going to make a new file, and um, this file is going to be uh, base API configuration, and I'm going to save this as API.js within the common directory there. Um, so to get the base API, you know, I'm gonna still use Axios, but I'm gonna use it out of this file. So I'm gonna import Axios, and um, that's already been added to the project. It's part of our package.json file. So it's listed in our dependencies for the project. So it was installed when we ran npm install, and the project is currently using Axios to do it. Um, I'm then going to make a new object that is going to be a constant object and I'm going to call it API in all caps so that I know that it's special. A lot of the time we capitalize the names of constants 
Um, and I'm going to use the axios.create uh, method. So there is a link um, in the notes to the Axios uh, repository homepage, which gives you a lot of uh, documentation and links to additional documentation about Axios. It is um, really worthwhile to check that out because a lot of refactoring work depends on you understanding how the different pieces um, of, the, of the tools that we're using work. So um, in this case, Axios allows us to create a, um, an Axios object, an instance of Axios, um, and define some things uh, sort of across the board. So here, for example, we can define um, the base API that will be used for every API call. So what that means is um, this is basically going to be prepended prepended to the URL that we put in each specific call to an API endpoint. So what we're doing here is, you know, the, the URL for our API service is this domain. We leave off the HTTP or HTTPS because we want the browser to just fill that in with whatever we're on currently. So if we're on HTTP, it'll be HTTP. If we're on HTTPS, then it'll be HTTPS for an SSL secure uh, communication. Um, we then have the full domain, uh, which is just the same in every request. And then this is the path to the API version. So 2.5 is the version. And then whatever comes after this is the specific API endpoint. So this would be like city search or current weather or forecast. That's, that's what will come here. And we'll, we'll define those on each specific, uh, in each specific um, call to the API. So that's all we're going to do is just create that object. And then um, we're going to just modify that object by um, adding a request interceptor to the object. And again, this is a feature of Axios because Axios provides this ability to create these interceptors. Um, and when you create them, it runs this interceptor function before it makes any requests. So uh, in the code, we, we make a request and we execute that request. And then that request is then intercepted. And this function that we define is going to be run. Um, and so what we want is to add some common parameters. So I'm just going to document that set common parameters uh, for each request to the API. Uh, and then the way that we can access the config is the config object that is passed in to the, um, the interceptor. So that would con contain all the information about the API request that we were trying to make. And we can add to the params ob object another uh, property called app ID and that will automatically be serialized into the query string parameters on this API request. Um, so we'll make it say app ID equals yada yada. Um, and so now we can actually go back and use this app ID within the context of this interceptor. And that's going to add our app ID to each request. And then similarly, we can add units as another parameter because that's the same for each one. So we wanted to say imperial there uh, because we're in America and we're using <laughs> imperial units. Um, and so uh, so that's, that's the way that that gets configured. Then um, we must return the config because that needs to happen in order to, to continue processing um, the actual uh, the actual API request. Then we want to um, just make sure that we catch any errors that that might result from this, and that is going to be um, handled by just um, rejecting the promise for this 
for this API call. So when we make an API call, remember, um, we're actually creating a promise object. Um, that promise object then becomes resolved and turns into a data object. Um, and uh, so if we run into an error with applying this interceptor, then we want it to just kill that whole process. And so that's what we reject the promise and just send back whatever information comes from that process. So um, we are now almost ready to use this in our code. The only thing that we need to do is we need to export this API value. And we can do that by just typing export command right up here on line five of this file. So here we can see that uh, we've exported this constant value API. So we're going to have to import it with the name API when we go to use it. And then it is going to, that API object has an interceptor defined on it that is going to intercept each request and is going to add the app ID parameter and the units parameter to each request. So we're going to have app ID equals this and then units equals this, and that's going to get added. So no matter what other parameters we define or other data or, or uh, attributes we define on the API request, we're going to end up with these parameters being appended. So um, what we can do now is actually use this within the city search component here. So instead of saying import Axios from Axios, we're going to say import API, and it needs to be in these curly braces because that's a named import. Um, so we, we need that API object from within this file. And that is going to come from, we're going to use the at to stand in for our source directory, and then common slash API. So remember the .js is, is our sort of appended for us, so we don't have to write API.js. You can if you want to. Um, and then um, down here, we're going to actually change this uh, call. So we'll get rid of this to do because this is what we're doing is improving this base config right here. So we don't need to keep that anymore. Um, sorry, having a hard time selecting that. And then we'll change this to API. And instead of, of including the whole thing, all we need to do is say find. That's it. And then we don't need to con include these two parameters because we just need the query sent because those other two parameters are already added for us with our interceptor. So now we've cut out, you know, three lines of code from this and, um, and shortened up this, uh, this whole configuration quite a bit. And we should see really no change at all in our functionality on the city search. So if we go back here, we can see, oh, we have an unexpected token and we see that that's in line nine of our API.js. Uh, oh, we have an extra parenthesis. That, that kind of thing happens. Thank goodness we have good tools to help us detect that. So we save that and we can see in the background here that this page is now loaded. And if we look for Seattle, we still get the, get the results for Seattle. If we do Los Angeles, we get the results for Los Angeles. So that's excellent. Um, now what we can do is uh, go and make this same change in each of these other files. So I'm just going to do that really quickly. And I'm going to talk very quickly through it. Uh, first, we update the import statement. I'm just going to do that in both of them. I'm not saving in between these. Um, then we are going to uh, update the actual configuration. So we'll remove the uh, comment. We will change that to API since that's the object that we're referring to. Um, and then this just becomes weather. And then once again, we only have to send in the ID. We don't have to send in those other two parameters. So we can save that one now. And we'll go to forecast and we'll do the same thing. We'll reference API instead. We'll get rid of this spurious comment and we'll switch that to forecast. And then once again, we get rid of two parameters there. So we say that, so all total, we just saved ourselves about six lines of code and a bunch of characters in each of these uh, configurations. And this is just a little bit shorter and reads a little bit more cleanly. And we can really focus on the things that are unique. So this requires an ID for forecast. 
an ID for current weather, but in city search, it's a query. And so that's good. We can now have called um, better attention to the unique aspects of this, um, of this API call. And we should be able to see that we are still able to view the current weather and still able to view the five day forecast. And all of these are using the new calls now. So, um, so all of that is still functioning like it should. And uh, that means that we have completed basically the first chunk of basic requirements here where we have um, abstracted the base configuration of the API. So now we just need to create the child components and then use the child components in each of the views uh, for displaying the weather information. So I think I'm gonna break up into two different child components here. Uh, the first one is going to be um, the weather summary. And so what I'm going to do is uh, just copy this template here. And then I'm going to um, make a new component file. And I'm going to go ahead and just write the template tag, paste in this stuff, and do a little cleanup on my indentation. And then I know that I'm going to have a script tag. And I know that um, I might have a need for a style tag. But I, there's nothing that I want to just sort of wholesale bring in right now. So I'm going to go ahead and um, save that. And I'm going to call this weather summary dot view. So I have this in here. Um, I know that I need to define some stuff in the script. And for simplicity's sake, I'm actually, this is not that big of, um, of, a, of a script to edit down. So I'm gonna paste this in here. I'm gonna remove this import because we're not using that import. The name is weather summary. Uh, we want to keep a name on our, our components. That's, that's considered good practice. Um, we don't really have any data that we want to use right now, um, and we don't have any methods that we need to define, but we do want to define um, some props. And these props are, uh, are going to uh, be sent in by the parent component as it invokes this component inside of its template. Um, so these are the properties uh, that this component expects to see. And then these properties can be accessed in the template for the weather summary component, just like uh, any values that were defined inside of the data object would be accessed. So what we can say here is, um, we can say weather summary in weather data And then we're just going to output the weather summary main. So I guess weather data is probably actually an array instead of an object. Sorry for that mistype. Um, and so by looking at this component now, a developer can see, oh, this component um, shows an image that it's putting together. And then it also shows um, a little title for that image. And we know that from our results here that that, that is actually um, in the city search. We can see what that is, is the image for rain, the image for snow, the image for mist. So there can be multiples of these. And each one has a, a little icon that we can pull in and a title uh, that we can look at. And so um, we want to show those. Uh, we know that we're expecting the weather data array as the property, and um, we are just using that to loop through, and everything else can stay the same from the template because we had it written so that it was functioning before. So now all we need to do is add this to um, the template here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import weather summary from comp at slash common or sorry components slash weather summary and um, 
that should get us all imported there. And then um, we're going to be able to simply add on a components property to this city search component. And we're going to define that it wants to use weather summary as a component. And this name that we give the property is what we will use when we reference this as an HTML element in our template. So the way that this works is that we can then delete this whole div that we have here for the weather summary. And we can just make this a weather summary tag. We can remove this to do because we just did that. And then the only property that weather summary wanted was that value of um, city.weather. So here, let me um, undo for a second. I'm gonna go back so we can see the code that was here before. Notice that it's weather summary in city.weather. That is the value for weather data, right? So we're gonna, okay, let's bring back this now and we're gonna say props or sorry, weather data equals city dot weather. Now, if we just do that, that's not going to work. We actually need to use V dash bind on that. So now whatever the array is stored in city dot weather will be passed in as the weather data property to the weather summary component. So when we save that, we're going to get a little error there. So if we look at this error, what we can see is that it's saying that so what's going on here, I think is twofold. Um, first of all, uh, we have an issue with the name that we've used. Um, so uh, weather data needs to match this, which we had a capital W. Um, but the actual error that we're seeing here is that uh, we do not, we can't loop through the root element of a template. So the, the root element of a template needs to be something that can just hold uh, these uh, you know, elements here, right? Um, and, and when we're making a loop, it's going to create multiples. So there needs to be one root element that sort of wraps everything in a template. And that's not the template tags. That's actually something else. So that's what we forgot to put in there. So now when we save this, I think that error should go away. And we should basically see that we get, um, we get layout. But you notice that our layout is a little bit broken here. It's, it's vertical instead of horizontal. And if we look back at city search, what we can actually see is that uh, there is a weather summary style that we could cut out of city search. It is scoped, so it's not applying to this, um, this new component that we made. But if we, uh, we do that and we'll say scoped on this new component as well to make sure that our styles are properly scoped. Um, now, if we do this, I believe we should see, yeah, these uh, layout properly horizontal. So, um, so that's, uh, it looks like our, our weather summary is basically working here. And what we need to do is just implement this in each of these uh, places. So now it needs to get implemented on the current weather. So let's go ahead and take a look at current weather to implement it. But we're, we're actually we're going to cheat just a little bit. So the first thing that we're going to cheat with is uh, we're going to copy in the import statement. And we're going to do this basically the same way that we applied these changes. We're just going to do this on current and, and forecast both at the same time. Then we're going to copy the components here. And this one has filters defined also, so we'll We'll copy the, that component. Um, and then we need to actually 
put in the call to weather summary now that we've added that in. And so for each one of these though, notice that they use a slightly different um, value that they're putting in. So we're gonna put in weather summary, but here it needs to be weather data dot weather. So we'll get rid of that old code and we'll get rid of the to-do and we'll save that. And then here we'll do the same thing where we uh, come in here and this needs to be forecast dot weather. And we'll get rid of that old code and we'll get rid of this to do and we'll save those. And so now we can see that our weather service is still working. Our five day forecast is working. Things appear to be laid out properly there. Um, the only thing that we have remaining is that in each of these other views, we can go down here and we can remove weather summary. So there's four more lines of styles that we can remove from each of these files. So it's always so good to make your files more slim. Uh, they're easier to read, they're easier to understand, it's quicker to understand them. Um, it's just really, really nice. So now basically we're just gonna repeat this process for um, the actual, uh, the the other chunk of code. So um, this is sort of like a, um, a weather data output, right? And what's interesting about it is that it's, it's this definition list. So that's cool. Um, we, we also have a, um, let's see, here in current weather, it's a definition list, and then in forecast, it's just the same definition list. But notice that um, in, in current weather, we have a current temp, and in the city search, we have a current temp, but in the forecast, we don't have a current temp. So that's interesting. Um, we're we're going to need to modulate that existence of current temp. But otherwise, everything gets uh, referenced the same way in each of these. So I'm going to start with this uh, this example here. And um, what I'm actually going to do is just duplicate the weather summary. Um, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to do a, a save as, and I'm going to call this uh, just weather data dot view. It's a, a little bit confusing, but hey. And then um, what I'm going to do is uh, paste in the um, definition list. So the definition list should be our uh, container wrapper here. And then um, we just have all of this um, there. And we could just leave this um, can be uh, weather data as well. Um, so that that can stay fine and so um and it looks like the object that we would want to pass in here would be city.main so we'd this would just be weather data dot temp and we could just copy that and we could um paste it over each of these to modify this template and then there is a set of styles that apply to these definition lists and so I'm going to cut those out of city search here and I'm going to paste them in um, over that old style that we had from the weather. So now we have a weather data view and it takes a property called weather data and um, we will change its name here to weather data so that we don't get it confused at all. So we had the weather summary and then we have the weather data and the weather data has like temperature, humidity, high and low are the things that it's going to have. Um, so that's cool. One more thing that we need to think about. So for current temp, that doesn't exist on the forecast. So we're really going to want to do like a V if. Um, so we're going to put the V if weather data dot temp on here. And this way we, we won't show current temp for like the forecast where there's no temp, um, but it'll show on the other pages where there is a temp. So that should work out. Um, then 
uh, what we need to do is just uh, get this implemented on our um, on our other components, and that's basically going to be the same process that we used before. So we're going to, I'm gonna just paste that, and I will use my multiple cursors to make this weather data. And then here we can say weather data goes to weather data. And then up here, we can pull out this whole chunk and we can say weather dash data and we use our vbind weather data and that can be city dot main and now we can get rid of our to do and we can get rid of this definition list and we should have a working city search that still shows us basically all of the stuff that we were supposed to see. And that's what we can see here. So that's great. So now we just need to put that on each of our other uh, components as well. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. We'll paste in the import statements. And then we will grab our extra line of our components object. And we'll paste those in. And then we will go up here and we will grab our weather data element and we're going to paste it in, and this is going to be weatherdata.main, and we'll get rid of the DL, and we'll get rid of the to-do, and then we're also going to get rid of, oh, look at all these styles that we get to delete from each of these files. It just makes them so much shorter. That is really, really nice. Um, so we're going to do the same thing here. Paste that in. We're going to adjust this as forecast.main. We'll get rid of this extra comment and that definition list. And then we're gonna go down here and get rid of this, all these styles that are there. That's gonna make that so much shorter. And we should be able to see that we still see exactly the same everything. And you notice that um, we have a little bit of an issue. It looks like current temp, there is a temp object for the forecast. So we might need to revisit that a little bit and um, actually uh, pull that out. I think that, that means average temp on in the case of the forecast is what they're, what they're sort of saying. Or No, it looks like it's the low. It's the low for each day is showing as the current temp. So we could we should go into the data and we could inspect that and figure that out and of course um, we could do that by going in and actually looking at the view data and we can see that we have um, some uh, we can look here and we can see what temp is, the temp is there. So maybe a better check would be uh, something like this, where we might say if weather data dot temp is not equal to weather data dot temp min. This is not a perfect fix, but might help us just in a pinch here. There we go. So now that has gone away, but for the current weather, we still see the current temp there. So as long as it's not currently the low, um, it works. It's an imperfect solution, but um, hopefully the point, the point is well taken about getting that, um, getting that done. Finally, the, the last thing that it asks us to do is create the error list. 
I'm, I'm actually um, not going to demonstrate that because I feel like this video is getting over long and is this exact same process that we've just done two times. So I'm going to leave that to uh, the mystery <laughs> here. Um, I want to just reiterate the importance of making sure that you use like a find in files um, search or something like that to look for to do's. Um, so we can, um, we can say, no, actually I want this in uh, projects temp slash watts 4000 refactoring and just say find and um, so that's, that's a vendor <laughs> file there. Um, I think, I believe that is a spurious issue. Um, well, maybe we could say, uh, finding files will, uh, look just in the source. <laughs> so we have no more to do's left there. If we look, we don't really have anything else. We should, we should check out. Uh, we definitely don't need this logo, so we can delete that file. Um, but uh, we can't have an empty directory, so I'm just going to make uh, uh, this is where static assets can be placed. And I'm just going to call this readme.md in the assets there. It's just a placeholder. Um, and then... Uh, that's it. Um, so basically we've done all of the major pieces of this refactoring, um, except for the error list, which like I said, is, um, going to be, uh, basically the same process that we use to break out the other views. Um, the error list is uh, a useful thing to create so that we can just have that show up whenever we need it. Um, but that is, uh, that is basically it. Once you um, build this, it is configured to build to the docs um, directory. So you can go into settings and change the GitHub pages publication from uh, GitHub pages branch to the uh, docs directory. And everything should be all uh, functional and working um, once, once you get that done. And you basically end up with the exact same app that you started with, which is always sort of the problem <laughs> with... Uh, uh, with working with refactoring, but it's also um, one of the good things about refactoring. You know you did it right if you didn't break anything. So uh, that is everything that I have to uh, present about this project and working through this project. Good luck getting the error list done and good luck finding other ways to make improvements to your application. And I look forward to seeing everybody's work online. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.